Hello friends, welcome to Lug Life. You guys, it's been a while since we have done one of these videos, but we recently put out on Instagram that we wanted your questions. We wanted to answer things that you want to know about us. So today, we're doing a viewer Q&A. We got a whole bunch of questions. We went through all of them and we picked out 12 of our favorites to answer today. Joy Beth, are you ready just to jump into it? I am. Okay, now we're going to start with a question that is very, very timely. Yeah. And this is a question we've actually gotten over the last couple of weeks. And that question is, are you guys going to watch Mulan with the $30 price tag? Now, a little bit of background, just so you guys know, Mulan was supposed to come out in theaters earlier this year. And then COVID happened. And then the world fell apart. And so then it got pushed back to like July. And then I feel like it was like August. And then Disney came out and said, you know what? We're just going to release it to Disney, Pro Disney Plus for a premium price. It's $30 on top of your Disney Plus cost right. to watch Mulan. Sherry, are we going to do that? And how do we feel about Disney taking that approach? Uh, I'm going to say yes, we're going to do that. <laughs> for sure we are. Um, and I think for me, I understand... Um, both sides like wanting to hold on to it until it can be viewed in a theater but then also just being like when are we ever actually going to be able to sit in a theater again mm -hmm. and so just wanting to get it out to the public but knowing that they're going to lose a lot of that theater revenue if they don't charge anything for it so i totally understand like from a business standpoint charging the premium mm -hmm. and that doesn't actually offend me so no, not at all. um and honestly like because we can't go to a theater now I would just like to watch the movie. I just really want to see it. I've been looking forward to this since it first started having like these rumors that they were making it. And I, um, I, I'm perfectly willing to pay for it. Um, when it first was announced, the price, $30, I saw a lot of people online talking about how expensive that is. Mm -hmm. uh, it is expensive, no doubt about it. $30 mm -hmm. is expensive. However, we would spend more than $30 going to the movie, buying popcorn, that kind of stuff. Now, we granted... We spend more than that just on the tickets. Yeah, granted, that would be a better experience, right? right? Better seats, better, like, screen, better sound, all of that. Better experience. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I actually don't mind paying $30 for this. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand that Disney spent millions and millions and millions of dollars to make it and you have to right. recoup your cost some way mm -hmm. and also it's only going to be like in december you'll be able to watch it for free on disney plus right it's just for like september and october really that it's or in november yeah. that you have to like pay for it and i that, i'm okay with that yeah because that's the way movies normally work mm -hmm. right is that when if you want to see a movie when it first comes out you pay a premium price uh, mm -hmm. It's just the difference now is that the premium price is at home instead of at the theater. So we absolutely yep. will be watching and paying the $30 for Mulan. Yep. Uh, this next question we're answering just because it made us laugh. <laughs> they said, uh, because I'm eating Popeyes right now, what is your favorite fried chicken chain? This is my favorite about <laughs> you guys and the questions you ask. Uh, so random. Right. So, so random. So favorite fried chicken chain. And here's the thing is that this term throws me off a little bit. Fried chicken chain. Right. So my question is, are we talking like fried chicken, like on the bone fried chicken? Or are we talking chicken that has been fried? Because if that's the case, that opens it up to Chick-fil-A. It's Chick-fil-A. Right. If Chick-fil-A is in your definition of fried chicken chain, we would both be Chick-fil-A fans. Correct. However, you said you were eating Popeyes. I love Popeyes. I am a fan of Popeyes. If you guys I like Chick-fil-A better. If you guys remember, well, hold on, Sherry Beth, because if you guys remember, we did the Popeye's chicken sandwich versus the Chick-fil-A chicken sandwich, and both of us said we liked the Popeye's chicken sandwich more. However. However, that was in Indiana. Yep. And I have heard that there are some discrepancies between chains yep. at Popeye's, and we tried it here in Anchorage. Or lo locations. Locations, yep. right. And we tried it here in Anchorage, and I was not impressed. Like, I, we haven't had it again because I was just like, eh. Uh, confession, I have had it again. You have? I most certainly have was gone it, back to Popeye's. Was it as good? It was definitely not as good as the first time we had it in Indiana. It's still a really good chicken sandwich, mm -hmm. but I would choose Chick Chick fil A would be my answer if Chick fil A is allowed. Um, yeah. I would say. Yeah. So, Chick fil A. If not, if not, if not, what is your favorite fried chicken? Probably Popeye's. Popeyes. Huh? Over KFC, um, other fried chicken chains, because we don't have like Church's Chicken in Anchorage. We don't have yeah. some of those other chicken chains. We have like, um, we have Raisin Cane's. We have Raisin Cane's. I like Raisin Cane's, but probably Popeyes for me. What about you? I would probably say Popeyes as well. Yeah. I, 
Lucky Wishbone is a restaurant here in town that's not a chain, but they have really good fried chicken. If you ever come to Anchorage, pan fried <laughs> chicken at Lucky Wishbone. Let's meet up. We'll have yeah. milkshakes and fried chicken together, yeah. all of us, okay? We'll all get one big booth, like a big happy, happy family, yeah. and eat fried chicken together. <laughs> Next question. What is a state that you have never been to that you would like to visit? I have an answer. You have an answer? I do. Let's hear it. Maine. Maine? Maine. So I really liked... Um, the little tiny bit of the East Coast that I saw mm -hmm. when we were there. We saw um, Connecticut and um, a little bit of Massachusetts, like kind of Boston area. We went to Rhode Island. Um, we went to New York City real quick. Um, I really liked New England and I would like to do all of them, but... Um, all of the Englands? All of the Englands. But I... <laughs> <laughs> but I... Um, really love lobster. Yeah. And there's just something about wanting to get lobster from Maine that is just like at the top of my list. That makes sense. Uh, I also have an answer. You do. Except mine is not in the same part of the country as yours. Mine okay. is Tennessee. Weird. I know your face right now is like, <laughs> why? But here's the thing. Nashville, Memphis, both cities I want to visit so bad. Yeah, I would not... want to go to those cities, but I've driven through Tennessee and... Okay, so maybe my choice of Tennessee. No offense to all our Tennessee viewers. No offense. Meet us in Nashville or Memphis. <laughs> right. I just, I've always wanted... We have a number of friends who live in the Nashville-Franklin area. I've always wanted to go. Uh, and so when I think of states I haven't gone to, like, I think... And then, like, barbecue, like Memphis barbecue and the blues. Oh, come on. Come on. Tennessee is my choice. <laughs> Why are you mocking me? You're just really funny. Thank you. <laughs> So it is September officially now, it is officially and we September. are officially in fall mm -hmm. season, so we can discuss this. Yep. Candy corn, yes or no? Oh my gosh, I know that this is divisive, because I know there's some pro candy corn people out there. After I have one piece <laughs> of candy corn, I'm just like, why does this exist? Why does it exist? Candy corn to me is on the same level of peeps. Whoa! I know. I knew that was going to cost some tension. I know, but listen, I have. I know I like peeps, but I... I, candy corn is literally one. I can have one. And then it's like a nope. year, and I'm good. Like, I, check. But <laughs> I will say, decorating with candy corn is awesome because it looks great in like a glass bowl. Oh, sure, yeah. So visually, it's great. Uh, <laughs> but then when you have to eat it, you're like, oh, this is what trash tastes like. Yeah. It's just not good. It's just not good. <laughs> Next question. Uh, I think both of us have a lot of answers to this one. <laughs> what movie always makes you cry? All of them. <laughs> <laughs> every, every movie makes you cry. All of the movies. Okay. Is there one that just um, stands out to you? There are movies that I will watch when I specifically want to cry. Okay. Like P.S. I Love You. Yep. And I think we watched this sometime in the last year. And I told you, like, I ugly cried oh. the entire thing. And you were like, okay. Like, he had never actually watched it with me. No, literally, beginning to end, I'm, like, sobbing. The whole like, movie. <laughs> it's like, are you okay? Wow. <laughs> it's like, I told you. So, P.S. I love you. Beaches always makes me cry. Okay. Um, the Notebook always makes me cry. Okay. Mm -hmm. For me, uh, I, I could go a couple different ways, and I'll, I'll give you two examples of them, and you guys can mock me. Um, obviously, my favorite movie of all time, Schindler's List. I lose it. I can't make it to that movie. It just absolutely rips my heart out in, mm -hmm. in the most beautiful way right. um but then i'm also i get really emotional when it's like over <laughs> stop stop i get really emotional when it's like when it's like overcoming stories or like victory stories like miracle like the movie miracle <laughs> the 1980 miracle on ice hockey team makes me cry every time but there is another movie that makes me cry that is not a movie you should cry at because of the exact same like overcoming like obstacles, the thrill of victory, cool runnings. Oh gosh, no, I always cry that cool too. Cool runnings. When they like pick up. The Stop. <laughs> when they pick up the bobsled. <laughs> I know it's not a movie you're supposed to cry in. No, I totally do. Oh my gosh. So apparently we're both very emotional. That's the takeaway from this question. Next question. If you could live in any book universe, what would it be and why? This is a really good question. And somebody this asked. This is a really good question. Some, really hard. Somebody asked us on Instagram, and as soon as I read it, I was like, yep, we're using that one. Um, I think for me, it would be Narnia. Mm -hmm. Because Narnia to me, and this is going to sound really strange. In some ways, I feel like we live in Narnia. <laughs> like, there are times that, like, we're out in Alaska in the winter, and I look around, and I'm just like, oh, I live in Narnia. 
Is Mr. Tumnus here? Is Mr. Tumnus here? Because like, <laughs> this is magical. And Narnia to me has just always been so, and I love the books. It was one of the first like full series that I read and fell in love with. And it You're also, welcome. yeah, thank you. That is, that is thanks to <laughs> Sherry. Uh, but also there's something about Narnia that feels like where we live. Like we get to live in Narnia, which is the coolest thing. So I think for me, that's what I would choose. Sherry Beth, as somebody who has read probably at least two times as many books as I have. <laughs> at least two times. <laughs> at least two times. What would your answer be? Oh, this is hard for me because there are so many books that I really, really loved. Mm -hmm. And I really love the world that they're in. Um, Harry Potter. Oh, jeez. Um, wow. I, would, I would love to live like in that kind of universe. Um, oh, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of books, but probably most of them have to do with magic. Like, I okay. think I would like to live in a world where magic is really a thing. Oh, like Narnia. <laughs> yes. Oh, like Narnia. <laughs> This next question, uh, we did tweak a little bit, just so you know, based on the way that somebody asked it. We tweaked it so that it fit us a little bit better. Uh, you guys know that we love Broadway musicals. Love, love, love Broadway musicals. And we each have our favorites. Yeah. And so for us, uh, I would say that there are probably, we have a number one and a number two that are very close. Mm -hmm. My number one and number two is Hamilton and Les Mis. Mm -hmm. Your number one and number two is... Well, Les Mis and Wicked. Les Mis and Wicked? Yeah. Okay, so here's the question. Adam, Hamilton or Les Mis, and Sherry, Les Mis or Wicked? Oh my god. I, I, I mean, how do you choose? The thing is, they're so different. And specifically, like, Hamilton um, isn't one of my choices. Like, I love, love, love Hamilton, but it's not one of my top two. Okay. So for me, Les Mis and Wicked are so different. The stories are completely different. The songs are completely different. We're in New York City, and we have one evening free. And we can only pick to get tickets to one show before we get on the airplane and fly home. You want to go see... Blah. Wicked, probably, because I've oh. only seen it once. Okay. And I would like to see it again. Okay. Lame is I've seen three times. Okay. Uh, While I love it, and I would totally see it again if I... At any chance that I could. Um, I would probably, if I had to choose right now, Wicked. Because Wicked? Because I've only seen it once. Um, so mine are Lame is and Hamilton, and I absolutely love those two so, so very much. Uh, I think right now, and some of this isn't fair. If you ask me in a year, I might change my answer. <laughs> um, but right now, I am such on a Hamilton kick. You are? A surprise! Uh, He's been I, listening to the soundtrack, like, nonstop. That man is nonstop. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I would choose Hamilton. Yeah. Next question. What is the coolest experience you have had when meeting a viewer? Hmm. Um... Meeting you guys in person is one of the highlights of the entire YouTube experience for us. Like when we get to spend time and meet you guys, whether it's in a coffee shop in Anchorage when you visit our state, or whether it's at meet and greets or wherever it is, uh, it is, you guys have no idea how much it means to us to be able to get to know you and see your face and hear your voice and hear a little bit of your story. Yep. And so every every viewer interaction we've had it really means the world to us. I say this on Instagram Live the night, you guys get to see our faces and hear our voices, right? You know what we sound like, you know mm -hmm. things about us. We don't even know what you sound like. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like we know nothing about you guys. Right. And so when we get the chance to uh, to make that connection with you, it means the world to us. Next question. September is a special month for us because it is our 15th anniversary this month. Uh, and so the question is, did you figure out an anniversary celebration? So, <laughs> a little background. Uh. <laughs> for our 15th anniversary, we were supposed to be on a Disney cruise. Like yep. the cruise was leaving on our anniversary. It was the big Leg Life viewer cruise that COVID decided to poop on. So <laughs> we right. now need to make new plans. We have ideas. Yeah. We haven't made any plans. <laughs> we don't have anything solid yet. We don't have anything. And it's we like- We probably should because we are in the month. It's in a few weeks. <laughs> like we don't know what we're gonna do. We've been so focused on like the, the launch on Etsy on the 19th yeah. and then our anniversary is on the 23rd. Like we don't know what we're gonna do. Yeah, and our anniversary is actually on like a Wednesday. So which we'll- is super lame. So, so we'll celebrate it the next weekend, the next weekend. <laughs> is our thought. But yeah. no, we- Our 15th anniversary and we 
we don't have any plans. We did. We did. We did. <laughs> Thanks a lot. We had really good plans. Thanks a lot, COVID. <laughs> and speaking of COVID, somebody asked how our jobs have changed since COVID. It's a really good question. Um, I feel like my jobs have changed a lot. And as you guys know, you guys ask a lot of times, Adam, what you do, and, and it's not as easy of an answer for me. Uh, just as a quick recap, I am the executive director of a local nonprofit, uh, own a media and marketing business that works with clients kind of all over the country. Uh, and then obviously like YouTube stuff, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, the nonprofit has been, um, it's been really difficult. I'm gonna be totally honest. It is a hard time um, to be in the nonprofit world from both a fundraising standpoint, but also when you work with and serve marginalized people, uh, we've seen a lot of our clients' lives over this season just really go into turmoil, right? Mm -hmm. And so the need of what we do has increased while the resources to do that have decreased. And so it's been really difficult um, in that. On the marketing side of things, it's been tough because a lot of clients, uh, especially clients that deal with like big events and festivals, uh, obviously those got canceled, right? And so lost a lot of uh, contracts from that. Fortunately though, uh, I've had a lot of new clients come in, mm -hmm. which has been awesome uh, from all over the country. So for me, yeah, COVID's actually impacted what I do quite a bit. Sherry, what about you? Um, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Literally not at all. Um, so in March when everything shut down, we moved our desks into my home. And I mean, I have a whole new other setup um, upstairs and so I didn't miss a day like we just whoop, and moved and then in May the beginning of May we moved back to our offices and I've mm -hmm. just been there so, so you're back in the office full-time now mm -hmm. and like business mostly business as usual business mostly as usual we're electrical uh, electrical contractors and have been considered essential from the beginning and mm -hmm. so we haven't actually um, had to shut down we had some jobs in Washington that took a little bit of a hiatus, but um, we've still been working. So all of the office people have been working every day. Next question. Um, I like this question because it's a COVID question, but it's starting to be more optimistic. <laughs> what are you most looking forward to when the restrictions end? Sherry Beth, what do you think? I think we have the same answer for this. We definitely have the same answer. I just want to go to a movie. Isn't that crazy? <laughs> like of all of the things that have been <laughs> shut down, I miss going to movies. Yeah. I, I just, it's, I don't know. And we, I we go to a lot of movies. Uh, and I think that mm -hmm. one of the reasons we want to go to a movie so bad is that it feels like that's a normal part of our routine and our rhythm mm -hmm. that has been disrupted. And when we can re-add that like thing that is such a part of our life, mm -hmm. that will feel more normal. Yeah. Plus movie theater popcorn <laughs> is just, and we had this discussion earlier tonight Keto or not, I'm getting the largest popcorn. If I if they'll let me bring a wheelbarrow in and fill it with buttered popcorn, I would do that. Wow. I, that's how passionate I am. Okay. So definitely for us, going back and watching yeah. movies. And this is the last question, and we um, specifically moved this to the end because we really like this question, and I think it's a good thing to it's a good one to like wrap up the video mm -hmm. with. So um, in addition to our faith, what is giving us hope in these days? I love this question. And mm -hmm. I, I love this question because if you guys remember in our last vlog, we said we wanted to start ending more of our videos focusing on things that we're thankful for, right? Fo kind of ending vi videos, reminding ourselves that no matter what is going on in the world, there are still things to be uh, hopeful of and positive of and thankful for and encouraged by. And so to me, this question is just like the perfect one to end it on. Uh, so in addition to our faith, what's giving us hope these days, I think for me, and this is going to sound weird because... Um, this is like both sides of the coin. So my answer is going to be like the goodness in humanity. And the reason that can be a weird answer is I think a lot of times when you read the news reports right now and you see stories going on, we can be so focused on like the negative in humanity, right? The badness of humanity, the evil of humanity. Um, but I've seen a lot of really good things in humanity lately. Mm -hmm. Like in, in you guys and just like in our community and in our friends, I've been reminded over the last few weeks that there are genuinely good people in this world who love others, who care for others, who want to serve others. And that to me, just like it, it's so hopeful that even in a year like 2020, that is just crazy and chaotic and uncertain that there is still this spark of good in yeah. people. Right. Yep. And that was honestly going to be my answer too. like, 
there's a lot of bad going on in in the world and there's a lot of really bad people happening in the world um but to be able to kind of look around and not just people that we know but stories on the internet and of you know just the good of humanity like there are still good people out there and that makes me hopeful that this dumpster fire is going to be put out and i think that <laughs> i think that that's just a good tip for us and a reminder for us and a reminder for for all of you is that in a world like we live in today where what is communicated to us and what is always put in front of us, whether it's on phones or whether it's on social media accounts or, or news feeds, uh, so much of that can be bad, right? Or can be shocking. Um, sometimes you have to be intentional about seeking out the good. You have to look for the helpers. You have to look mm -hmm. for the good. You have to look for the kind. Mm -hmm but it exists, mm -hmm. right? Don't let the tidal wave of <laughs> crazy and bad um, cloud the view that there is still really good in this world. And I think to me, that's what gives me hope is that uh, I genuinely believe that at the end of the day, it is that that will uh, overcome and will succeed and will break through. And so for me, um, it's the good in humanity. And apparently for you, it is as well. Yep. So friends, 12 questions that you guys asked. Everything from fried chicken to hope in humanity. <laughs> that is why we love you guys, because you are as all over the place as we are. Mm -hmm. So friends, thanks for being a part of our Leg Life community. Thanks for being a part of our journey. Uh, we will do more of these videos in the future. Like we said, we got so many questions. And so if yeah. there are things that you want to know about us, if there's questions you'd like to hear us answer, let us know. Post those in the comments mm -hmm. below. And so friends, we will see you on Friday with the next Leg Life video.